what is GDNT and why we need GDNT in the first place when we already were using coordinate tolerancing system which is much simpler than GDNT. My name is Kevin Koto and I'm going to explain this answer in this video. Do subscribe, like and press the bell icon so that you never miss any learning video from Design Geeks. Before GDNT, we used to use coordinate tolerancing system for almost 150 years. It's a dimensioning system in which part features are defined by rectangular or square tolerance zone and it has very minimal amount of symbols. As we see here, this whole location is shown by 25 and 20 dimensions and they have their own tolerances. So based upon if these tolerances are equal or different, we are going to get square or rectangular tolerance zone. It uses implied or assumed datums. That means quality inspector has to assume them to measure the dimensions. So if this system was so simple, what was the need to use a GDNT? Is because coordinate tolerancing system has some major flaws, especially in the mass production. Now let's understand them and also get clarity about how GDNT solves them. The first drawback of coordinate tolerancing system is a rectangular or square tolerance zone. Now as shown here in the example, we have a block and we have a drilled hole of diameter 8 plus minus 0.2 tolerance. This hole is located by 25 plus minus 0.5 and 20 plus minus 0.5. That means we get a square tolerance zone of 1 by 1 plus minus 0.5 shows 1 mm width of the tolerance zone. Now if we calculate the hypotenuse as I have shown here, it will be calculated by Pythagoras principle. Square root of 1 square plus 1 square which is going to give us 1.41 and if I round it off it will become 1.4. If we have the whole location axis falls at the corners of the square that means 0.7 millimeters away from the center this part will be acceptable as a good part. But when same whole axis falls 0.7 millimeters away from the center of this rectangular or square tolerance zone, in any other direction, the part will be rejected as it falls outside the square or rectangular tolerance zone in these areas, which doesn't make sense at all. It also means that now many functionally good parts are rejected because of this flaw of coordinate tolerancing system. Now let's understand how GDNT solves this problem. In GDNT, I can locate the true axis of this hole with the basic dimensions of 25 and 20, which are derived from here. And then the actual variation with respect to this true location can happen within the diameter of 1.4, which is derived from here. Now the tolerance zone is cylindrical instead of square or rectangular tolerance zone. This simple change results into 57% more tolerance zone compared to the square or rectangular tolerance zone. And that means all the functional parts which were rejected in these areas now will be acceptable as good parts. And it saves a lot of cost for the company. The second drawback of the coordinate tolerancing system is fixed size tolerance zone. As shown in this drawing, the through hole of 8 plus minus 0.2 is located from the implied datums by 25 plus minus 0.5 and 20 plus minus 0.5. The purpose of this hole is to locate the round lug in the mating part. When this hole is produced at 7.8, which is lower limit of the hole, that means 8 minus 0.2, the lug which is locating here now has certain limits in terms of going out of perpendicularity as shown here or even move within the hole. But as the hole becomes bigger and produced at 8.2 which is the higher limit of this hole, now the same lug should get more room to go out of perpendicularity or move within the hole as shown in this figure and still readily assemble with the mating part. But unfortunately, that's not possible in coordinate tolerancing system because the whole diameter doesn't define the square tolerance zone of the location. It is defined by tolerances on 25 and 20 dimensions. 
So it doesn't matter if the produced hole becomes smaller or bigger, we still get the square tolerance zone or rectangular tolerance zone, which is defined by tolerances of 25 and 20. In GDNT, we first define the true location of this hole with the basic dimensions of 25 and 20 and then allow cylindrical tolerance zone of value which is defined into the feature control frame at maximum material condition or least material condition of that feature of size. We can use M or L modifiers in order to define at what material condition this tolerance will be applied. It also means as hole size deviates from this maximum material condition or least material condition, we get additional tolerance apart from this provided tolerance in order to control orientation and location. As hole becomes bigger, now we get additional tolerance apart from whatever provided tolerance here in order to control the orientation and the location of this hole. Also, when we want tighter controls of orientation and location, that means if I don't want to provide this additional tolerance, we can also do that using GDNT. The simple thing I have to do is I should not provide M or L modifier. That means at whatever size this hole is produced, I am just going to control this orientation and location within 1.4. That means plus minus 0.7. So GDNT is definitely more powerful to solve this problem. The third drawback is ambiguous instructions for manufacturing and inspection. As you can see in this figure, we have the block and we have the through hole and the location of this through hole is defined by dimension D. Now the same part will have different variation on each of the face. The quality inspector can measure this part in multiple ways and the variation into the surface is going to affect that measurement. Like one of the quality inspector measures it like this is going to put this face to the surface plate and this face to the angle plate. Now because these two faces have different variations, the measurement is going to get affected. Similarly, other inspector can measure it like this in vertical position. Because there is different surface variation on both of these surfaces, now the measurement we are taking it like this will be different than this. Unfortunately, this drawing doesn't tell quality inspector how to orient the part for the inspection or which surface has to touch the surface plate and which surface has to touch the angle plate. And because of that, they have to assume these datums and they have to make their measurements. In short, coordinate tolerancing system gives these ambiguous instructions for measurement. Whereas in GDNT, we have datums. We can define primary, secondary, tertiary datums. That means we can define in which sequence the datum features are going to touch the surface plate and the angle plate and any other gauge element where it should touch. So definitely GDNT solve this ambiguous instruction problem. GDNT has many symbols, it has many rules, it has definitions of the different terms used in this standard. It also has conventions that means best practices used in engineering drawing. In order to define size, form, orientation and location of these features or feature of sizes. Two main standards which are very popular in GDNT are ASME Y14.5 2018 standard which is also called as dimensioning and tolerancing standard. And we also have ISO 1101 2017 standard which is also known as GPS or geometric product specification standard. ASME stands for American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Y14.5 is the standard number and 2018 shows that the latest revision of this standard was done in 2018. Now GDNT offers a lot of advantages. The first one, it removes ambiguity by providing datums. It also gives us functional dimensioning and tolerancing. That means we can define each feature and feature of size directly from the datums as per the function of the part. By providing M and L modifiers, we can get additional tolerance which I have already explained to you. And we know that by using cylindrical tolerance zone, we almost get 57% larger tolerance zone compared to the rectangular and square tolerance zone. So that means more parts will be acceptable, there will be less rejection and the cost of rework and rejection will come down drastically. Now GDNT as per ASME Y14.5 2018 standard has 12 geometric characteristic symbols. We have multiple groups in which these symbols are divided. 
the first group is form group that means they control the form of the features we have straightness flatness circularity and cylindricity which control the form we also can use profile control to control the form whenever we use these symbols to control the form we never use datum references the next group is profile control we have profile of a line and profile of a surface when profile of a line or surface controls the form we never use datum reference but when they control location or orientation we always have to use datum reference the orientation control of angularity perpendicularity and parallelism will always have datum reference in position control that means location control we always will have datum reference unless it is self implied datum only in the case of self employed datum we don't show datum references in feature control frame runout control and total runout control are applied for cylindrical feature of sizes which rotate around another cylindrical feature of sizes which are concentric or coaxial apart from these 12 geometric characteristic symbols asme y14.5 2018 standards also has 24 modifiers they provide additional information on the drawing and tolerancing of the part these modifiers can be applied inside as well as outside the feature control frame this is the list of all the modifiers which we use as per 2018 standard they include m l translation modifier projected tolerance zone free state tangent plane unequally disposed of tolerance zone statistical tolerance continuous features diameter spherical diameter radius control radius spherical radius independency modifier all around or all over modifier square reference arc length dimension origin symbol they have dynamic profile tolerance this is specifically used in profile controls we have between and from and to modifiers these modifiers provide unique meaning to that feature control frame and the tolerance and the size where they are applied so i hope that this video was helpful for you to understand what is gdnt in the next video we are going to study what is feature control frame do subscribe to the youtube channel so that you never miss any learning opportunity on design kicks